all doing really well? Today we're going to do a little get ready with me and I'm going to be answering all your assumptions about cancer and lymphoma. Actually, do you know what? I've got this new number seven primer. That was my papa. I need to get new ones because my prison, like, it's pure hard to get them off so I have to go to a garage to get them taken off. Um, it's just really stressful. Just like this. It's nice on my skin anyway and it smells lovely. So, what would I, what will I do first? I'm gonna do my eyes first, guys. Yeah, like, see with my makeup, I don't really plan it. I'm not a makeup artist or anything like that. I just kind of go with the flow and then see what I end up doing. Which, you know, it's really fun. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at the mirrors. How has everyone been? I feel like this lockdown has fucked so many people over, like, Including myself, like it's just been a complete and utter disaster from start to finish. But, like, do you know what? Like, <sighs> see, before I was diagnosed with cancer stuff, I was always quite a wallower in self pity and stuff. But I just feel like now there's no time to be sad about anything. Is there really like, how, how can you be sad about things when time is so precious? And like, why would you waste your time thinking about people or? thinking about what's going on when you know the other people aren't thinking about you really are they hope all you guys are doing well because you you've all been so nice and supportive to me and it's the least that you guys deserve so i'm just going in with the elf 16 hour camo concealer this is like the best concealer i've ever ever came across because it hardly creases and i i have like quite liney eyes does that make sense like especially under my eyes too like they're quite liney, so my eyes always crease unless I've got like eyeshadow or stuff on. But it, it like it's really good because it sets really quickly. So like, I will leave it for like a minute for it to go a bit tacky, and then I'll just go right in with my beauty blender like I'm doing and just smudge that out. Then I'll just go in. I don't want to do anything heavy with my eyes. Today. I'm just doing bits and bobs um, today that I need to get done. This color just to mattify my eye and make sure it's not going to crease what i'll do is i will go in with my bronzer and bronze the actual crease of my lid this is actually my bronzer by the way guys it's just at this palette it's from profusion and it's the one called zinc i've not put on makeup in so long so i was just like do you know what i'm going to do my get ready with me that i said i was going to like a few weeks ago and then so much happened in my life that I just didn't get into filming it. So I was like, oh, do you know what? It's getting filmed today. Genuinely what I would do. Like, they're not amazing. It's not perfect. If, see for example, if you're ever worried that it doesn't look nice, genuinely just keep blending out and it will. Like, just do circular motions and windscreen wipers and then it will eventually blend out to be nice. I know you guys have, like, the lights from Ikea. Like... And they're so amazing, like they're amazing, but do you not think that they give off some amount of heat? Like, is that just me? I don't know. Like, you tell me, guys. I think I'll go in with this wee guy and just... A, wee, a, a lighter shade than the first one I used and just put it in here. So this is what I'm talking about, the winged eyeshadow. So this is what I like doing now, because I don't have to have it either. I'll use like, a colour like this, like when it's the one that says Vibes. And a little angled brush. I asked for new brushes for my Christmas, so here's hoping. Just mark it across like this. And the good thing about this is you can, like, obviously, like, clean it right off if you make a mistake. And it's eyeshadow too, so see, even if you're doing your foundation first, you you can literally clean it with a uh, concealer. Right, so do you guys see how it's just nice and clean? My favourite foundation for every day is, like, just this wee revolution guy. But I'm actually going to change the use the Fit Me Maybelline one. Not the best fit one. Oh. Oh. I've seen some people using their hands, so like, I might try and see what's happening. I've been using my tans pretty by the way, guys, but like, obviously, I will fix the colouring. Like, I know this is not my colour. But, 
like that's okay because I'm usually paler. I don't like this foundation. Let's try another one. Concealer like this one a little bit goes a long way. So I actually don't use too much, especially when I've got my my little face tanner on. So now that I've been talking rubbish this whole time and not been doing any assumptions, let's start with some of the assumptions that I had before I had cancer or when I had chemo. So like genuinely, as somebody who comes from a very scientific background, I am astonished at some of the things I genuinely thought were true about chemo and cancer. Until it's happening to you, you wouldn't want to pay attention to it because it's not something that Obviously, it's not something that's nice, it's not something that people actually want to talk about and discuss, like, of course it is, but, like, it's very important because cancer affects one half of us, one out of two will get, will be affected by cancer in our life. So, it's, like, so important to, like, know about these things. I thought there was only one chemo treatment for all cancers, like, I honestly, like, genuinely believed that chemo was one one product for all and it's absolutely not there is loads of chemos out there loads of different chemicals that obviously do different things for different cancers and they can obviously use some of the same chemos for different cancers and like i don't know what i thought about radiotherapy but i know a bit about it now a bit more anyway obviously i'm not totally educated on it because i never personally had to go through it like it's not something that i can comment on through experience but I remember, like, I thought that radiotherapy was, obviously I knew it was like a big machine and you go through it and they pass waves through you. But I didn't know they direct the waves to the actual spot with the cancer or the the, tumor, the cancerous tumour. Like, I genuinely thought they just pass waves through your full body. So, they don't. They pass it through the bit with the cancer. So they actually, like, aim it, if that makes sense. So, like, how mad is that? Like, they actually aim the radio waves at the cancerous bit like i think there's a lot of like myths about chemo and having cancer even people with the same cancer like they can have different chemo treatments from each other like so people with different stages of hodgkin's lymphoma get different chemo uh, chemos and it also really depends on like your consultants and stuff like it's totally dependent on your doctors and what your doctors think is the best for you like They've got to assess your case on you and you only. Like, they can't take it just from, oh, well, this is what these people have had, so we're just going to do that. Like, it's totally, totally... Like, I know people with Hodgkin's lymphoma who have had radiotherapy and chemotherapy, whereas I just had chemo and it, 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 all the tumours and all the masses and all that I had, they're gone. So, do you know what I mean? So... And like I've had a look at the assumptions obviously when they were coming in and like some of you guys have got like such good like opinions and like assumptions because like I was looking at them thinking oh I really did think that too. I only know what I know about cancer because I've, I've forced myself to research and you know I was actually interested in learning about my condition because it genuinely amazed me how much I could do without like the condition properly affecting me like I was still going to work every day going to uni I was out and about like there was nothing that I wasn't doing basically that wasn't normal apart from the fact when I got home I was crying with exhaustion and I was just so so tired it's mental at how much your body can put up with like it honestly honestly stuns me like the human body is literally amazing how's everyone feeling about the vaccine because i've heard so many mixed emotions so many i know people think that they may have rushed this vaccine and stuff but you've got to remember like we're in t nearly in 2021 like we are like at the pinnacle of technology like so i've got a new mascara that i can try lash impact ultra I've heard like don't cuddle your eyelashes and stuff so I might just not. I feel like after treatment like I feel like my eyelashes have been so different. It's like the only thing I've proper seen like a big difference is probably on, like my lashes. Like I feel like it's so hard to build them up like 
Oh, I, I'm not a fan of them in that year. Oh, maybe it's just that mascara. Oh no, they're so shite, but... I mean, they're a bit thicker. Right, guys, this is it. So, I'm using the Sexy Mother Pucker lip gloss just because it smells amazing and oh, who doesn't like those burger lips? That's me! So, I'm now going to just go over your guys' assumptions. So, I'm excited. So, I asked on my lymphoma page if anyone had any assumptions about cancer, lymphoma. But I found the first half because I've done it in two halves. Firstly, I have that chemo is just one drug. See? I'm not the only one, guys. That is, like, a crazy one, I think, for me. Because, like, I think, how was I so numb and oblivious to the fact that there's loads of chemos out there that help tons of different cancers like surely that's about self-explanatory another one said i assume that chemo makes you sick a lot like that's a good one too because i definitely thought that i was going to be very sick and stuff but quite soon after i was diagnosed the nurses took me in and they did say they were like a lot uh, maybe like half our patients don't even get sick with chemo like they feel nauseous and stuff but they're never actually physically sick and what they said to me is like a rule of thumb is like if you get travel sickness you're more likely to become ill and like sick with chemo rather than if you don't and luckily I don't get travel sickness so I did get nauseous a few times as you guys know but like it was never like I was actually going to vomit up chemo made you feel sicker than what I felt before no, that's a good assumption though because people will assume that when you start to lose your hair and obviously sometimes you can be very pale because the, the chemo strip in your blood that you might look a bit sicker than you were before but honestly like after my first chemo I felt such a relief on my chest like it was actually insane like I feel like I could breathe again like I remember when I was bending down I would always have a coughing fit because obviously the fluid was coming up up my little windpipe that stopped because of the release on my chest like honestly it was crazy like chemo made me feel so much better this person assumes that i that me having cancer gave me a different outlook on life that is so true because it definitely has before uh, cancer and chemo i was very much so just get for the day to get to the end whereas now i'm like you're never going to have this day ever again so why would you sit about moping why would you sit about sad like you do not know what can happen to you tomorrow like, you could be in a hospital bed tomorrow and yeah you you could be the sickest you've ever been literally in 24 hours so why do you waste time don't waste time like please don't waste time and see over other people as well do not give your energy to people who don't deserve it and i've learned that the hard way guys like covid made coping with cancer harder yes and no i would say yes because i physically didn't have the emotional support there from my friends and my family however it made it easier in the initial stages because obviously if I'd seen everyone in the hospital I would have been very emotional, very tired um, and the way that, that I worked in the hospital I could only really see my mum so it meant like even my mum was there I could still sleep and rest if I needed to and it worked out better physically for me because I was getting the rest that I needed but maybe not in the emotional aspect especially afterwards when I was home and you're just looking for things to do it was just me and in the house for four months like we were we didn't get to do anything we couldn't even go a walk so like that was probably hard but at the initial stages I'm kind of glad I didn't get to see my loved ones because it would have been so emotional like the hardest bit of this whole journey was telling everybody that I loved so like in a way I'm glad I couldn't see them because I would have been a riot like oh something you thought would never happen to you I mean I've always been aware of the cancer statistics I know that happens 50% of us so I'd never say never like but with my lifestyle I was healthy like I only kind of went out maybe like once a month if that because I had uni too so like uh, I ate healthy I drank to at least two litres of water a day I was in my terms a healthy individual and I just think that even doing all those things and being as healthy as I can be didn't save me from getting cancer so in the grand scheme of things like if if you want to do things for yourself then you should do them because it doesn't matter how healthy you are how how many times you go around a week it can still happen to you and trust me like I'm living proof that it can oh well, like yeah if my situation doesn't make you realize that it can happen to you anytime then I really don't know what will because I was healthy next one says how do you feel your experience has compared to others you've 
talked slash read about. Um, fairly similar, I'd say, like, a lot of the people I've met through my lymphoma blog and YouTube and stuff like that, they are relatively the same, although I would say, like, the differences in Scotland and in England are, like, mad with the NHS and stuff like that. I feel like the support's a lot different from where you are in the country kind of thing so I obviously can't comment on what happens in England but I know people who are on different chemos to me and I know people who have done the same chemo as me I know people who have had radiotherapy and chemo so like genuinely every journey is different no journey is the same but it's like good to talk to people who have went through a similar process and know the condition rather than people who don't know because you can only know so much about a condition until you've been through it Someone said that they have assumed that I've coped so well with cancer among other stresses of normal life with uni, boyfriend, friends and Covid. When I got diagnosed with cancer nothing else really mattered so any other stresses I kind of just didn't even care about to be honest. Like my friends don't really give me any stress. Uni was fine. Uni was amazing with me about my diagnosis. Before diagnosis it was really hard to like get on with normal life because I was in so much pain. So I would say like that was really stressful. That, well the vast question, see when you're getting chemo can you feel it going through your body? That's such a good one because like you probably won't even think about this. But I personally didn't so I had a pick line in which is a line which goes through my arm into my heart. And I didn't feel anything at all. Usually run my chemo along with like a saline drip, so it just kind of dilutes the chemo going into your body, so it's not such a rush, if that makes sense. But there's another way you can get chemo, and that's through a cannula in your hand. You get one put in every single time you go to get chemo. And I have heard that people can get a sore hand through that. I don't know if they feel it going in. You shouldn't really feel anything going in if the cannula is put in properly, or if the pick line's in properly. So... The answer to me to that would be no, but I know that you can get pain from just where the site of the chemo going in. Someone has assumed that having chemotherapy would mean that I have a total loss of hair. That's such a good one because obviously I didn't lose all my hair, I lost most of it. I didn't lose it all, but I think that's a really common misconception because even my doctors told me that I would lose my hair and I managed to keep it. So it's genuinely just down to luck and your personal journey, how your body reacts to the chemo. And I think after a while my body was just like, right, <laughs> that's it, no more, we're doing it back. And yeah, that's a total personal thing and it's just amazing and how your body can deal with it like the same situations that other people but it can deal with it so differently so I was one of the lucky ones who didn't actually lose any of my hair well no that's such a lie I lost most of my hair but enough to like keep it I assumed you would remain positive throughout your treatment and the full process that is so nice thank you I luckily did and I had such an amazing mindset I think if my mindset was a lot differently a lot of people would have viewed my diagnosis a lot differently as well to me so I feel like me keeping positive kind of kept other people positive and that's probably a good thing I guess. I assumed you would have such a positive outlook for your treatment thank you again. Luckily I kept it then. <laughs> I mean I had my bad days but I think like overall I dealt with it amazingly and I'm actually proud of myself for how well I've coped with everything like I am a one tough cookie. I assumed that the fatigue and lethargy would impact your hook hugely. That's a good one. So I probably don't know the full extent of this question because I physically couldn't go out because of COVID. Like, for me, the fatigue was probably the biggest side effect of the chemo. However, saying that, I don't think it stopped me doing tasks around the house. I would nap and stuff like that. I would be able to go to and do like a full shift or anything like that. But I feel like... I feel like at the end I got a lot more tired because it was like a cumulative effect. So at the end I was knackered. Like I remember after my last chemo, like my, my family had thrown me like a mini party and stuff and I just had to go upstairs and go to bed because I was so tired. But at the start, because there's obviously stuff in your body for it to break down, there's actually like, it's not like killing your healthy cells as much, I don't think. Well, that's what happens in my brain anyway. Do the side effects of chemo come on right away? That's a good one. So for me, they definitely didn't. It was more of a cumulative effect. I started to lose more hair the more I got and then it got to a point and it stopped and then the more I had the more tired I got, the more I had the more sore my mouth was and the more I had the, like the more sick I felt so it was kind of like it building up my body and it was causing a, a hugely cumulative effect. So the last one is the last year has made you believe you're stronger than you thought you were. Oh a zillion percent. I have been through some traumatic times in my life but 
this outdoes them and this year just proves I can literally get through anything. Like I don't even know why I worry about stuff anymore because I'm just like if I can get through this year I can get through absolutely anything and like you should believe that too guys. Like it's not been a easy year for anybody and everyone went through a hard time and this year just goes to prove like no matter what's thrown in our week we can actually get through it. Like especially like when girls support girls it's the most powerful amazing thing because see if you've got a team of girls supporting you you can get through anything guys and like never doubt that I'll be that girl supporting you because I 100% will and I wouldn't want anyone to feel like they couldn't talk to me or DM me about anything so my DMs are always open guys please remember that you can message me on my lymphoma my page or my personal I'll put my personal here a problem shared is a problem half guys and I know I feel so much better just talking to like one of my pals never mind 10 of them I tell my friends everything so I just feel so much better when I get everything out, out and off my chest like it's like a big relief so never hold anything please don't hesitate to message me like i seriously mean that please message me if you need me it's been really nice having this wee chat and this wee get ready with me i love doing these so i'm going to do them a bit more often and it was so fun seeing everyone's assumptions i think like everyone kind of has the same assumptions so hopefully i've educated you a little bit if there's anything you're still unsure of please don't hesitate to message me and i can do some research and i can fill you in about anything if you've liked the video please like subscribe and comment on it and if that's everything guys i will see you in the next video i'm looking forward to it already bye love yous